that long? Well, I'm only an onlooker. I wasn't in there, but I think he should have let it go, yes. These are paid professionals. And after all, they, after all, Marv, they waved at the three knockdown rule, and this man wasn't even down once. It is Bedlam within the ring. Everyone is anxiously awaiting to find out how in the world you pulled that thing out. You were so far behind. I haven't got, you know, I sustained a slight injury to my eye in my uh, workouts. And uh, hers kept on left jabs, right hands, and it started to swell. You know, I got a little intimidated. Uh, I started slowing down because I didn't want my eye to swell up, especially going to late rounds. But I kept the pressure. I worked his body. And uh, from there on out, it was a matter of condition. Did he hurt you at any time? He sure hit you some beautiful shots. He me, but never really had me in that much trouble. Uh, he rocked me, but never nothing that serious enough to... Uh, you, know, you had him in the sixth and seventh round, but then he went back on his horse and started to run. Did you feel desperate at the end? Not really. He surprised me, but I knew I had to build up enough points to uh, equal this, even the score. He's a hell of a fighter. I give him a great deal of credit. I take my hat off to him. I think you're a great champion, Sugar Ray. Great. Well, a superb fight which must go down in boxing history. Will there be a rematch? You know, I don't have too much to say. You know, I proved myself. I think all the ultimate questions should be asked of Tony Hearns and his managers and trainers. You know, I proved that I'm the best welterweight in the world. You have to ask him the rest of the questions. The problem was, it was two champions in the same division, and one of us had to be eliminated. Over here. Just, may I say, Detroit, I shall return. After his lackluster showing against Kevin Howard, Sugar Ray Leonard would retire once again. The hitman, Thomas Hearns, and Roberto Duran continued their careers, each of them hoping for a rematch with Sugar Ray Leonard. Duran, 33 today, makes his way to the ring, attempting to win the WBC light middleweight title. This astonishing fighter, 81 fights, 176 and lost five, 17 years a pro. Duran gets into the ring above us to a terrific reception from a 15,000 crowd in the car park here at Caesars Palace. The underdog, Duran, written off and really reborn a year ago on his 32nd birthday when he blasted Davy Moore, gave Hagler a very decent fight indeed as he attempted to win a fourth world title. Outpointed then. Now the underdog wants turns and then Hagler again to become a unique fighter with four titles. Roberto Duran. And here comes the champion, Thomas Hearns. The hitman from Detroit, his championship belt comes with him. Thomas Hearns, who says tonight he's going to be the hitman all over again. Forget the cobra, forget the caution. He says tonight I'm going to be the hitman. And watch out, Roberto Duran. And they're chanting hitman in his corner. We have a beautiful evening here in Las Vegas and the temperatures drop to around about 80 degrees. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the super welterweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, fighting out of Panama City, Panama, weighing an even 154 pounds. He has a professional record of 77 wins, 5 defeats, with 58 knockouts. He has held three world titles in his career. He is a man with the hands of stone 
reception for Duran. And in the blue fire, the WBC Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 153 and one quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 38 wins, one defeat, with 32 KOs. No longer is he called the Motor City Cobra. He has returned as Thomas. The hitman, Hearns. Chip seconds? Chip seconds. Okay. Hearns, Duran, you are going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid Referee and Mayor Carlos Padilla, his 36th world title fight handled a thriller seconds, in Manila. On. Roberto Duran in the dark trunk, Thomas Hearn in the trunk gymnasium yellow. Hearn, the champion. Duran, the WBA champion, no longer. Lost that as soon as he stepped into this ring. We're looking to see if Hearn can establish an advantage with that left hand that is so quick and so strong. And we're looking to see if Duran, who's been around for such a long time, is going to crowd him and rough him out of it. And a bit of chat between the two, I would think, in there. Carlos Padilla, who has never handled turns before. He was in there when Duran outpointed Leonard for the World Welterweight type in Montreal some four years ago, was in there very quickly. Will Hearn have too much equipment for this brilliant professional Roberto Duran? We've got a great reception here, and certainly Hearn's that left hand that comes up like a lot. He wants to be the hitman, and he started off very determined, and Duran backs away. A rare sight, a good opening flurry. Come on, hit me again, says Duran, and Hearns just does that. Have a bit more. Duran waves him in, scores with a right. What an opening round. A grin from Duran as though he loves being hit. If you ask why he's been around so long, it's purely because he loves being in there. But he took one there. And he's taken some more. And almost contemptuously, he waved Hearns on, and Hearns tried to wrestle him down and get a warning. Are you okay? And just looking at Duran, looking at the side of his face, I think he's got a mark. I think he's marked down the left side of his face. Clubbing right hand, and he is marked. Duran looks to be cut. Left eye. And down! Roberto Duran, six in the first. Take the standing eight count for sure. What a sensational start coming towards the end of the first. He's got 15 seconds to survive and he's in desperate trouble, Duran. The hitman is pouring in. He's sitting on the rope. Coming to the end and he's down again in the first. And up very quickly indeed. It's the end of the fourth. Six. Another standing count. And it's going to be over a sensational first round. And Duran has walked to the wrong corner. He doesn't know where he is. What a round for the hitman, Thomas Hearns. Duran is cut. He's been decked twice. And he's in a lot of bother, despite all those antics. Let's look at it again. This is sensational stuff from Hearns. 
got him with a right hand and Duran was down. He has never been knocked out, Roberto Duran. He was up very quickly. He took a standing count. And when Hearns came in again, he was immediately in more trouble. Pinned him on the ropes. Duran foolishly beckoned him in. And that was a second standing count after that. Round two. Can Duran come back after that appalling start? Will Hearns finish it in two? Has he said so? Duran is going to need all his ring craft and all his spirit now. Hearns has got him going in the second again. Is this the end of a great career for Duran? Pinned in his own corner. Another brilliant flurry from Hearns. He wants to finish it now. Duran is holding on and hugging and trying every trick in the book. Hearns can't wait to get on with it again. Duran is smiling, but they're saying it's all over around me. He won't be able to take too much more of this. His guard's down. He's fighting back. It's his instincts that are keeping him alive there. It's all Thomas Hearns, the right hand. That's got to be it. That's got to be it in the second for Duran by a right hand, his seconds are in and it's all over it's all over the end for Roberto Duran on the eve of his 33rd birthday we must ask will we see him again and Hunt has done what he said he'd do he knocked him out in the second round Roberto Duran never knocked out as a professional not been down for many, many years, but Thomas Hearns, look what he feels about it, has retained his title in unbelievable style. The evening sunshine here in Las Vegas. Perhaps here Hearns has now won round all those people that doubted him, that doubted his charisma, and doubted his fighting ability by stopping one of the toughest fighters the game has ever seen in the second round and a sad figure there Roberto Duran is this the end of a great career that started 17 years ago all right then let's get into the ring and hear what Thomas Hearns has got to say the right hand that put him down in the first round looked like a uh, one of the best punches we've ever seen you throw how would you rank it I have to say that was the hitman coming back again. The hit one of great shots. The hitman from Detroit is back. He's back. How do you feel about this victory over a great fighter, a legend, Roberto Duran? I feel, I feel great. I think that Roberto is still a great, a great legend fighter, and I feel that he has a lot more good fight left in him. Congratulations, son. Well, there's Roberto Duran, Roberto Duran in the other corner. And good to see him accept defeat with a smile. A right hand was the one that ended it. We wondered if Thomas Hearns still had the ability to punch with that right hand. He's had so much trouble with it in recent times. But it was a punishing blow. And from the moment it landed, Roberto Duran's seconds leapt into the ring to look after their man. That was it. It ended the fight and retained the title for Thomas Hearns. Now they say they want Marvin Hagler as the fireworks go up above us here in the car park in Caesars Palace. Well, his punching was explosive. And it's Thomas Hearns' night here, unquestionably, in Las Vegas as Duran, at 33 years of age, goes back to his dressing room. He might now say those famous words that he uttered on his stool when he quit against Sugar Ray Leonard. No mass, no more. Marvelous Marvin Hagler had established himself as boxing's number one superstar. Both boxers kept their pre-fight promise that this would be a war.
is customary. It is the challenger who enters first into this Hagler's title. Even though Tommy has won two titles, he does not own the middleweight crown that he seeks tonight, and thus he is the first to come in. And the long wait is over, as accompanied by the entourage. He is out of the dressing room and about ready to enter the arena. He's been lighthearted, basically. Kurt talking about the aerobic dancing and bringing folks into the ring and the open sparring sessions and open workouts. Quite serious right now, though, is Thomas Hearns. Appropriately entering the ring to hail to the victors the Michigan uh, fight song. Still not in view of most here in the arena yet is Hearn, so no response as yet, but very shortly he will be approaching that part of the arena here at Caesars Palace just about now where they're beginning to, to take notice of the entry of Thomas Hearns as he comes down the aisle. The second time Thomas Hearns has had this kind of situation. The last time, of course, against Sugar Ray Leonard. He hopes this turns out differently. Now he's spotted. the steps he comes and into the ring he comes Thomas Hearns the only loss of course to Sugar Ray Leonard back in 1981 a fight in which he was ahead he had shown his boxing skills in that fight against Leonard and many think they may come into play tonight if Hagler would hurt him early as Leonard did that man Thomas Hearns has the speed to get on his bicycle and duplicate what he did against Leonard at least for a certain portion of those uh, fights he'd like a first round knockout here he says he'll do it in three we'll see took the ram out in two after the fight we will have an interview Thomas Hearns in the ring and awaiting Marvin Hagler, who loves to, among other things, make people wait. He is renowned, as you see, the very able corner of Thomas Hearns. And you know, when he fought Sugar Ray Leonard, Al, there was criticism of Emmanuel Stewart. Normally, a very calm corner for Thomas Hearns. On that night, the most pressure-packed of his career, there was some chaos in that corner. Emmanuel says, we learn from our mistakes with Leonard, and we feel uh, we've got it all together now. I'm curious as to the response when Hagler comes in. I thought it was sort of muted in a way. There was some cheering for Hearns, but nothing outrageous by, by any stretch of the imagination. Could just be a muted crowd right now. We're going to find out. It's possible, or in fact, uh, Hagler is the favorite of the crowd. Yeah. Which would be odd considering that, as you said, the betting money is switched back and forth. And if you talk, to, as I said, if you talk to any 10 people, you're going to find five for Hearns, five for Hagler. So it's been a very divided group of people here in Las Vegas and I suspect around the country as well. Here he comes. Marvelous Marvin Hagler out of Newark originally. Now Brockton, Massachusetts coming in to a mixed response. Maybe this fight means a little bit more to Hagler than it does to Hearns. It means a lot, obviously, to both. But that theory goes that Marvin feels he'll never get the respect he's due unless he beats Thomas Hearns. And he is, of course, chasing the record of Carlos Monzon, looking for the 14 consecutive title defenses. He has 10 now. He's shooting for number 11. And indeed, the response to Marvin Hagler seems to be a little bit more than Thomas Hearns. It is. It is. A bigger hand for Hagler coming in, for what that's worth. Then for the hitman. When he came in against Roberto Duran in his last big fight, it was just the opposite. So perhaps Marvin Hagler finally getting his due from boxing fans who on occasion have been indifferent to him. Bob Arum, the promoter, called him the Pete Rose of boxing. 
hardworking, resolute, single-minded, 62-2. and two, The two losses early in his career, both in Philadelphia, both avenged 50 knockouts. And it's been a long time since he knew what the word defeat was. Only the draw with Antifermo, any kind of stain on his record in recent years. And he certainly avenged that draw. A look at the tail of the tape. It tells you what you know probably already about the big reach advantage, the height advantage for Thomas Hearns. And uh, that's a key element in this fight. But for Marvin Hagler, he expects to get inside against Hearns. And if he doesn't do that, could have a long night. Can he possibly win if he doesn't get inside? Well, he could if he catches Hearns on the end of one of his uh, punches, perhaps a left hook. I think that's where him switching righty becomes a key factor. From the outside, I think he's much more effective as a righty. The common opponents, an indication there that Hearns, perhaps with more power, but Marcus Geraldo was not the fighter he was against Hearns that he was against Hagler and that knockout of Duran. So you can look on and on the number of punches. These are two fighters who will throw a lot of punches tonight. You see Marvin Hagler throws a lot. He's got a good jab, good combination puncher. The same is true of Thomas Hearns. Look at the number of punches he throws. A lot of left jabs snaking out there. Ladies and gentlemen, I would direct your attention to the lighted tower, the fantasy tower at Caesar's Palace, just to the northeast of us, and you will see unfurled the largest American flag in the world. The flag was created by Mr. Ski Dembski. And now it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce a very talented young man as I ask you to rise, please, as our national anthem will be presented by Doc Severinsen. For the next event of the evening, the judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles, California, Herb Santos of Reno, Nevada, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth, counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Omansky, and Charles Filippini. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Mr. Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, the WBC super welterweight champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the hitman, Hearn. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed 
middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Pat, Pat, good eight. Let's go. So the two come okay, to mid-range with Richard Steele. The instructions in the dress room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Let's go. Very simple instructions. And finally, it's Hagler against Hearns. The camera's going to have to go. Eloquent simplicity by Richard Steele. Let's go. He knows they know. Staring at each other through the national anthem. The stare down, of course, so customary before these fights. Round one. Hagler, right off the bat, attempting to get inside. He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him, right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body, and he bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns may have hurt him with a right hand. Hearns hurt him the right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler, he's hurt. Is hurt. Hagler is stunned. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler. But Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Wow, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. And a left by Hagler. Hagler. Hearns comes back. Another right. That one stunned Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Tommy Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in, and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing, comes in with a right. Missing with a left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to righty. He could block that right hand easier and he would land his own left hook. Turn with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye. Again, Tommy trying to come inside the hands of oh, Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep him on the ropes, but Tommy comes off oh. easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Hagler hitting him low. He is banging the body well. He is taking shots to the head. He blocks that right. Hearns tries to come in with the uppercut, and Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. But Hearns trying to box his way out. Half a minute to go in round one. This How far can this one go? That's very important. This is where Hagler wants him, but Hearns counter.